Joining us from Washington is CBS News Homeland Security correspondent Bob Orr and National Security Analyst Juan Zarate. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Harry. Bob, this sounds so much like old-fashioned police work. You start with this vehicle, you start working backwards, you get to the Craigslist, and quite honestly, everybody in this country leaves some sort of footprint, electronic or otherwise. That's exactly right, Harry. Uh, investigators tell me that the big break in the case came in the communications that surrounded the sale of the vehicle. Apparently, uh, the suspect in question uh, used his own name and email. So when investigators uh, found the owner of the car and said, who did you sell it to? Uh, she said, I sold it to a man that was either Hispanic or Middle Eastern looking. Well, when they then uh, presented some other evidence, including a picture of this suspect to her, she said, yeah, that's the guy. So the FBI says that they were onto him fairly early, and that was very important because they watched him all day yesterday and watched him until he tried to board that plane last night. And if they have that much information, he becomes relatively easy to find, does he not? Well, in some ways, that's true. The bigger question here, though, is was he a lone actor? And that's really why it took all day yesterday for them to follow out these leads. They went through his cell phone records. They went through uh, his travel history, looking for any possible accomplices. Who did he know? Where had he been? Were there other people involved in the plot? They needed for that to ripen, but they also needed enough evidence to create what's called probable cause sure. so they could go in and make the arrest. And that's what happened uh, very late last night. Juan, as we look at this guy and we realize he has these roots in Pakistan, what does that make you think about? Well, Bob, uh, Harry, it raises the specter of the international connections to this plot and the very real possibility that uh, when this individual was in Pakistan, he met with known uh, terrorist actors, potentially, and was directed back to the U.S. to try to attack in New York. There's no evidence to that yet, but that's certainly something that uh, the intelligence officials and counterterrorism officials that both Bob and I have been talking to uh, are, are talking about and looking at very carefully. Because immediately, the, at, at least at first blush, the first reaction was, this is a one-off, this guy's acting alone. Now we realize he has these roots roots in Pakistan, has roots in the, in the, in the Middle East. It, does this not also illustrate just the day-to-day -day vulnerability of we who live in a, in a free country? I think that's right, Harry, and I think uh, it points out the fact that we've got a, a, a morphine problem of, of terrorism, where you've got uh, U.S. citizens uh, who are potentially being radicalized, potentially connecting to groups abroad uh, who are trying to do harm. Uh, the good news here is that it was a fairly crude attempt mm -hmm. at an attack. It failed. Uh, and so it either demonstrates that he was acting alone and was trying to do this uh, in an experimental way or was just not well trained and was deployed prematurely uh, before he was able to execute properly. Think about that, Bob, the specter of him going out and trying this as an experiment and then going back to report to his operatives. I mean, you could conjure up all kinds of uh, conspiracy theories, but it's also to re important to remember just last week there were two guys arrested in Brooklyn. Well, that's exactly it. There are so many unknowns here. What we do know, Harry, is we have a problem in this country with homegrown radicals. And increasingly, we're seeing cases where people, either with agreements of their own or inspired by jihadist websites, are going out and trying to act. And in the most dangerous cases, making connections, as Juan said, to known operators overseas. Mm. Here's a guy so far that if he's not a loan operator, certainly is the primary mover here. He went out, apparently, and purchased the car, according to investigators. He apparently was driving the car. That's not uh, typically the kind of actions we see in a large-scale operation. Mm. Interesting. Bob Orr, thank you very much. Juan Zarate, thanks to you as well. Appreciate thank your you, expertise. Eric. All right. A lot happens early on The Early Show. Weekday mornings on CBS.